Good afternoon, and thank you for attending today's Progressive Web Apps for Oracle Commerce Cloud and ATG webinar brought to you by Commerce Pros and McFadden Digital. Before we begin, I would like to share a few housekeeping notes. Insight 20 conference registration is open. Insight will be July 13th through 15th in Boston. Register now to save up to 60%. For more details, visit commercepros.org slash insight. All attendees have been placed into listen-only mode. Please insert any questions for today's presenter into the questions module. If you experience any technical difficulties during today's webinar, please troubleshoot using the chat module. A recording of this webinar can be found under the community tab on commercepros.org within 24 hours of the conclusion of today's webcast. Now we ask that you sit back and enjoy today's webinar. This time I'll turn the webcast over to CEO of McFadden Digital, Tom McFadden. Great, thank you, Jesse. Appreciate the opportunity to chat with you guys about uh, Progressive Web Apps or PWA for Oracle, both Oracle Commerce Cloud, OCC, and legacy Oracle Commerce, ATG, and Indeca environments. So the subject of today's uh, webinar will be broken down into the what, the why, the who, and the how. So we'll break down into those four categories and talk about how Progressive is really the best of responsive and native apps, native apps meaning iOS or Android apps, uh, operating on both mobile, desktop, and other platforms. Uh, we see a little Venn diagram here of some of the, the benefits in the middle of the green of the PWA approach and some of the negatives of purely responsive on the left and purely native on the right. And we'll go through those during the, the session here. Again, my name is Tom McFadden and my contact information is there. We'll, we'll share that again at the end of the presentation. So the intent of this session is to be mostly educational, 99% educational, but we do have one slide about McFadden. So I'll just give you some background on who we are. Uh, we've been implementing large-scale e-commerce commerce and marketplace solutions for 20 years, pushing many of the dimensions of what people call large, dollars of transactions, uh, dollars per hour, assets managed, pages viewed, SKU count, uh, order items per day, multi-sites, user count. So We've been architecting and deploying and supporting enterprise scale e-commerce sites for 20 years. Uh, we've been in business actually 30 years doing system integration, serving a lot of the Fortune 500. And the, the e-commerce, especially Oracle commerce over the past two decades, those sites cumulatively generate tens of billions of dollars of gross merchandise value. And in the last 10, actually about 12 years, we've been focused on marketplaces as a subsection of Commerce and a lot of those have been custom built, have been custom built with Oracle Commerce or OCC, uh, but also using other tools like Miracle as a marketplace platform. McFadden Digital has hundreds of employees across the globe. We're headquartered in the, the US, but we have been operating also in India for 15 years with McFadden employees and McFadden offices, and five years in Brazil also with McFadden employees and McFadden offices. But what we're most proud of is making our clients successful. So a lot of our clients have received uh, Oracle Marquis uh, over the years, uh, same with other platforms, and including the, the marketplace solution with, with Miracle or the partner of the year. So that's what makes us most proud is making our clients successful. So that's the one slide of our commercial about McFadden. Now onto the, the meat of the presentation. What is a PWA? Why would you use a PWA? Who uses PWA and some of the success they're seeing and how to implement PWA? So in the how section, we'll also give you a demo of the McFadden PWA accelerator and show that working on desktop, tablet, and uh, smartphone. So let's jump into what is a PWA, Progressive Web App? Well, what, first let's start off with what the analysts think about it. So Gartner stated that half of consumer-facing apps will be replaced by PWAs. That's a pretty, uh, pretty broad statement, uh, consumer, considering all the uh, multiple apps out there, but there is a lot of uptick in PWA, Progressive Web Apps, as a platform. Forrester also has very positive things to say about that as, as they view mobile apps kind of essentially slipping away. There is some resistance, of course, from Apple uh, in, in uh, getting their, their slice of the uh, ice, ice, uh, um, marketplace for the apps, so they get a certain percentage of sales there. So they're pushing back a little bit, but it is a trend that uh, they're, they can't stop. And we see a lot of other analysts talking highly about the, the uh, PWA approach and the resistance from a lot of consumers to download mobile apps from the, the stores. So what specifically is a PWA? And Google has been one of the drivers in this. So let's go through line by line how they define a, uh, a progressive web app. Of course, by the first uh, word in the title, they are progressive, meaning that they progress in their capability 
uh, in what's available on that device and that browser. So if uh, notifications or alerts or access to cameras or location data or local storage uh, or Bluetooth becomes available, is available or is not available, it will leverage those capabilities on the device as, as, a, as made accessible. Again, that varies based on the browser and device. We'll talk about that a bit. The responsive, just like a responsive website. So on desktop, mobile, tablet, watch, other, other formats. So multiple viewport. They're also much faster after loading. And this is a critical aspect for a lot of e-commerce sites where organizations, SEO and other customer experience is driven based on uh, page load times. So we'll talk about that and actually do some live testing of PWA sites. Connectivity independent. So this is important uh, for, for a lot of, lot of retailers and B2B organizations. So you can continue working offline even if you or if you're on a low quality, low bandwidth network. Uh, much like mobile apps that can continue operating if you're on an airplane or out of cell signal or if some of our clients, uh, you know, B2B food distributors where the customers regularly walk into steel freezers or steel refrigerators and lose signal to, to place orders, you can continue that process while you're disconnected. They're app-like, so they have the look and feel of, a, of an app where you have some of the rich user interface that an app can provide. And they always get updated. So Service Worker, which we'll talk a little bit about, is something that runs on the native device uh, inside the browser. So that gets data updated into the app uh, automatically so that you have up-to-date information there. Of course, they use HTTPS with a TLS transport layer for securing the, the content and the communications. And an important thing is discoverable. Uh, Native apps, iOS and Android native apps, are not searchable on Google or Bing. So you cannot you know, deep link into a product detail page or a product listing page, category page, landing page in a mobile app. Uh, but you can do that with a, with a uh, PWA. You can get to, get, to, uh, get to it through a Google search engine or Bing search engines, et cetera. And you can also re-engage with the customer. Again, this depends a bit on the, the browser and device, but you can send push notifications or alerts, uh, much like a mobile app, to the user on their mobile device to get the customer to re-engage. And they can be installed like, a, like the look and feel of a, of a native app. And we'll show an example of that where you can install these uh, websites, PWAs, onto your home screen of your mobile device. And of course, the linkable, getting deep links into product uh, detail pages or other information that you want to get access to. So that's kind of the technical, what is a PWA? And in, in terms of the components of it, how you assemble it, and we'll go through an architecture diagram on this. You start off with service workers, and this is a fairly new technology. It it's runs in the browser, and it essentially is business logic that'll reach out back to your server and make sure that you have, the, have up to date information and, and process things within the browser without having to access a server. Manifest, this is um, some information that makes it discoverable and, and, and a little bit more technical in how it operates. You actually store information on your mobile device, and this can depend on the, the cache size setting. So you're not going to be able to download a million SKU catalog into that local web storage, but, but hundreds or thousands of items, whether or not you include photos, et cetera, can be stored locally so that the user experience can continue when disconnected from the, the web, from the internet and also for past, faster performance. You have libraries that can also contain database information on your local, uh, local device. And a newer interface, actually this is something that uh, Facebook started, but it's now open source uh, GraphQL. It's a much better uh, language for accessing APIs and optimizes the amount of data transferred for much better performance. So this is another one of the new evolving technologies for uh, data connections. That's a little bit more on the technology side. Um, let's talk about some of the business uh, benefits of this, of, of why you would, uh, of what, it, what a uh, site is. So AMP, you may have also heard about accelerated mobile pages. So AMP, if you think of uh, PWA being for transactional sites like e-commerce, AMP accelerated mobile pages is fairly similar, but it's more for static content. So these pages are generally about 10% of the size of a regular page. Uh, and are, are sometimes the first step to, uh, towards developing a PWA, a progressive web app. So think of PWA as, as AMP for static content, plus the service workers that provide the business logic and the functionality on the device. 
um, there's, there's a bit more to it, but that's kind of the simplified explanation of how AMP, work, AMP works. And AMP definitely is great for just static content and accelerating that user experience and that ranking on Google and Bing. So that's the what. What is a PWA? Let's talk about why. So one of the most important aspects for a lot of e-commerce operators is the uh, page speed load, both for SEO ranking purposes and for the general user experience. And depending on who you'll ask you, you, or which uh, statistic you believe, you'll see lots of different numbers. It's, you know, bounce rates double or conversion cut, is cut in half at, you know, two seconds, three seconds, five seconds. You know, different uh, analysts and, and organizations provide different numbers around there. But there definitely is a pretty drastic count on that. So um, here Google reports after three seconds, the bounce rate doubles. Um, or, or most people bounce after after three seconds. So about 50% of your customers will, lose, will leave after three seconds. Uh, and you will see metrics from a lot of different organizations. So Walmart and Amazon both observed 1% increase in earnings for every 100 milliseconds of improved web speed. And when these organizations are earning you know, billions and tens of billions or hundreds of billions of dollars online, that 1% increase is obviously well worth the, the investment in improving page speed. Google themselves as well say they lose 20% of their traffic for every 10, 100 milliseconds or, or tenth of a second for a page to load. We see uh, Shopzilla improve this, their earnings as a company by 12% and page views by 25%. So Amazon's cost for one second of slowdown, they estimated that to be one and a half billion dollars of revenue annually. One second equals one and a half billion dollars. Pretty important uh, second there. Shopify also sees um, that, that customers, about half the customers expect a page to load in two seconds or less. And about uh, three quarters of shoppers won't return to a site if they see that there's slow performance on that site. So a lot of different statistics from, from different organizations. Again, there, there are lots of different graphs. If you search for this information on the, on the web, you'll find all kinds of statistics about the impact of slow speeds. Here, this uh, Google graph from Google Analytics, you see a pretty substantial um, drop in conversion. The, the vertical axis uh, at the two to three second mark, we start seeing the conversion rates drop pretty precipitously. So that's one of the whys. There are a lot of other reasons. This is somewhat represented in that uh, Venn diagram we started off with. But PWA, this leftmost column here, where we have all the green yeses, is a superset of responsive and native. So some of the things that native apps have, full screen presentation, offline content viewing, push notifications, and offline checkout, those are available in PWA. And then some of the things that native apps cannot do, like SEO friendly sites, content aggregation, no download, cross-device responsiveness, meaning it can operate on iOS, Android, desktop, no updates required, direct linking to content for you know, deep linking to certain PDPs, for example, and bypassing the whole iTunes or Google Play Store approval process. So you have a lot of benefits of PDWA over responsive and native apps. So let's look at um, site performance. We talked about the importance of that and how, how can you actually quantitatively measure that. So a lot of you may already know that uh, Google PageSpeed is uh, one of the better tools, and it, it, within there is a, a tool called Google Lighthouse. So it's pretty easy to use this in the Chrome browser. So on a PC, just hit F12 uh, to run audits. You can also get this on the Mac in the, in the drop-down menus. So let's actually take a look at this. Um, I'm going to run to my desktop here, and we'll open up a browser and, and run this test here. So I'll open up Chrome, but before I do that, I wanted to show you here, we have a little icon here on my desktop for the PWA shop. That's the same shop that we're going to show you in the browser. So I'm just opening up Chrome, going to run to the, connect to the, uh, the, the site here. So we see this is our, our demo site that we'll go through in a little bit more detail later. But for now, I'm just going to hit F12 and run the uh, audit from this is Google Lighthouse. So we'll run an audit here. Nice thing about this, so you can simulate mobile, desktop, uh, simulate on uh, slow 4G, fast 4G, or even slower um, devices. Uh, so there's there are a lot of different ways of testing this. It takes about a minute to run, so we're not going to run it on too many sites, but we'll we'll see live here what the results are from 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 Google Lighthouse. 
And uh, there are a number of things it measures. So performance, meaning how fast it responds, how accessible it is. So ADA compliance or WCAG accessibility, best practices in site design and SEO. This is again using the McFadden accelerator. Overall, we get a performance score of 98 uh, out of 100. Uh, and it's obviously flagged as a PWA. Now, not all PWAs will actually meet this criteria because they've, they're pretty strict in all their checklist of items. But even if you get 75% you know, of the way towards PWA, you start seeing a lot of these benefits. Uh, other interesting metrics here are the first contentful paint. So about less than half a second. First meaningful paint, about again, a little less than half a second. First CPU idle after one and a half sec, 1.2 seconds. So, you know, a variety of different metrics here. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna look at some of these metrics back on our presentation uh, about uh, other, other sites. So, uh, so these are sandbox environments. So this is, you know, measurement taken a little while ago for the, uh, our PWA sandbox. Again, that's not a production site, uh, but we're comparing that against an Oracle Commerce Cloud sandbox. And later we'll talk about production sites. So if we compare the compare the first contentful paint in this you know, screen capture taken earlier it was uh, 0.7 the live one we just did was 0.4 compared to OCC uh, almost nine seconds and then first meaningful paint um, less than a second compared to almost 10 seconds uh, and this is not to, to bash OCC by any means this is the same with most e-commerce platforms the the real driver here is the PWA aspect progressive web app aspect which makes the performance improve so much better than the, the native you know, legacy interface. So again, these were sandbox environments and we see some pretty drastic performance improvements. Let's look at some production sites. So AliExpress is one of the uh, uh, better known PWA, progressive web, web app sites, you know, a multi-billion dollar site at very large scale running PWA. Again, sub second, sub uh, half second, um, initial numbers and everything, even the first CPU idle 1.1 second. And then here's a uh, production Oracle OCC site. And again, we see numbers closer to eight or nine seconds in comparison. And I'm not gonna mention any uh, site names here in the OCC world. This was actually one built by uh, the Oracle professional uh, services team. So not trying to call out any any you know partner being better or worse in, in, in that aspect. Again, it's more, an issue of the platform or the technology being PWA or not being PWA, not necessarily the implementation. And again, there are a lot of production websites that, that see this benefit um, of the high performance rank, you know, close to 100, 100 uh, score on Lighthouse from um, B&H Photo, Hobbycraft, Flipkart, Overstock. There are quite a few very successful sites. Again, we look at these numbers here, a lot of them are, are half second or so, for these first contentful paint, first meaningful paint, and a lot of these other metrics. And so we, we did this uh, test of nine OCC sites, production OCC sites versus nine production PWA sites. And looking at, at those uh, five of those metrics, we see in blue the PWA sites for first contentful paint, first meaningful paint, speed index for CPU and idle, and time to interact. And again, generally around two seconds or less on most of those metrics versus the, the data from the, the PWA sites, where we see generally four to 10 seconds of uh, response times. So this isn't just a few exceptions, but it's a general trend of the, the value of PWA over general technologies. So we mentioned that, that another benefit of, of why you would want to run a PWA is the ability to install it like a native app. And we'll actually show this to you on, on uh, an iOS device. So the send to on the iOS and similar operation for Android, you have the option to send to your, add to your home screen. And then the icon appears on your, your mobile device home screen, much like a native app. And you can launch it uh, without running a browser, it's full screen. Uh, and when you go into your apps, like the task manager or, or double tapping or, or uh, swiping up on the iOS, you'll see it at running as another app instead of just a, a browser within your tab. So there, there are a lot of other reasons to why you would want to run a PWA. The, the push um, ability to uh, send notifications or alerts to, to users of the device, drastically improve the view rate and the open click-through rate. 
uh, as well as users on slow networks, especially overseas. We see in, in developing countries, if that's any of your market, uh, there's a much slower speed. And, and you know, many in the IT world may have the uh, be buying thousand dollar iPhones or, or latest Google uh, Android devices. The typical user phone actually costs just a couple hundred dollars and is much slower network connection and much slower CPU and memory capability. So that's part of the why, but let, let's also um, look at the, the access you get with the device. So this is a tool called what web can do today, today. and feel free to, you can run this yourself. Um, this screen capture here is from uh, Chrome on Windows 10. So what web can do dot today will give you this information. So a, on HTML5, you can do get through all these things. So example, example important ones that we'll see include uh, locations, uh, local notifications, push messages, uh, operating offline mode. So a lot of these different things you can test. So that's again, uh, Chrome on a PC. And these vary, this is one of the challenges of PWA and something that everybody should be aware of when uh, journeying down the, the path of a PWA is on different devices. So here we have Safari on Apple. You'll see different availability of, of uh, capabilities versus Chrome on Apple, versus Chrome on Windows, versus Chrome on Android. Um, and again, so some of these are, are much better. Google is actually, Android is better at uh, supporting PWA. Apple is kind of dragging their feet a little bit because they like the revenue of their uh, iTunes uh, store. Uh, but, but some of the important things are local notifications, push messages, home screen installation, and again, we'll, we'll show that to you. So again, just looking at the summary of the why on that uh, Venn diagram, it's fast. We looked at the data. It works offline. We'll show that to you in a demo. It's cross-platform. So you build a PWA once and it works on PC, desktop, iOS, Android, uh, multiple devices. In some platforms, you can do push notifications. You can install on the home, mobile home screen. You avoid the stores, the Apple, iTunes, and Android Google Play Store. It's indexable by search engine, so you can be found on Google and Bing. It can operate in a much lower bandwidth environment. You can deep link to products. You're getting that full screen experience. You have uh, unified management, meaning that you can manage one PWA, instead of having to go make an update and well, we have to update our, our website on desktop, we have to update our iOS code and we have to go update our Android code. It's unified management, both the code and the data in those applications. You, you have some native device access, and not 100% of what native apps have, but getting, getting closer and closer. And you actually get better SEO from PWAs than non-PWAs with Google and Bing. And you no know, user updates, the service workers will automatically pull data from the servers to make sure that they have the best experience. So compare that to some of the, the negatives about responsive sites. Uh, it's essentially the negatives of some of those, the opposite of some of those. And on the right, we see some of the negatives of, of the native apps. Uh, again, the, the opposite of what some of the positives are. Heavy device memory usage. Again, some of the uh, countries or people with lower end devices may not be able to install a number of uh, heavy applications. And they're starting, they're starting to get a bit of app fatigue from some users out there. Okay, so that was the, we went through the what and the why. Now let's go into the who. So let's look at some examples of, of who is using this. So Alibaba, they saw about almost 50% conversions across browsers after implementing PWA. About 14% increase in active users and four times a higher interaction rate. Again, for a huge site like Alibaba, um, again, these guys did uh, about $30 billion in sales during their uh, singles day. Uh, so they're, they're a huge site. These are massive numbers for a big enterprise. And we see this for small organizations and big organizations. Lancome, the cosmetics company, about 50% increase in sessions on iOS, 70% increase in conversions. And Flipkart, the Indian e-commerce platform, 70% increase in conversion rate, 40% uh, higher, engage, higher engage, re-engagement rate, and a third of the data usage. So a lot of benefits across conversion, data, um, sessions, um, monthly users, and so forth. So lots of metrics from real users of PWA. So uh, that was a quick who. We, we also looked at some of those in performance. So let's talk about how. And we have uh, one technical slide here about architecture. We're not gonna get too, too uh, deep down into this. 
So in the accelerator for OCC, and the same accelerator can work with later versions of Oracle Commerce, the uh, ATG and, and Indeca version. But in this demo we're showing to you today, we're going to see uh, running on OCC. So at the bottom we have OCC with the products and collections um, catalog. We use the same uh, catalog management capability in OCC. Uh, and the images, uh, logins and profile, all that data remains in OCC. And same with orders. Orders are actually submitted through OCC into all the backend systems. So none of that backend integration or functionality needs to change. On the, let's look at the, the browser side, the presentation tier, and then we'll look at the middle layer. So we mentioned the service workers. This is code that runs business logic on the mobile device or the native, native uh, device. And you have a database of some information, including some of the cached information. So that if you're offline, this business logic and this data can continue to serve a customer experience without connection to any of the things below it. So in the middle, the API layer, this is where our accelerator and the, the PWA magic starts happening, is having a, a data pump to get OCC into Elasticsearch with GraphQL to improve the performance and searchability of, of the content. We have an API connector that connects to the that content on the back end. And Q and Redis uh, connect into this worker pool to submit orders and queue up other information for the, the front end and the back end. So that's uh, the architecture in a kind of simplified terms. And we're about to jump into our, our demo in a little bit here. So again, this uses the uh, OCC Oracle Commerce Cloud. So in the back end, you'll see the, the actual admin console here on the left. So this is how, you, again, you manage your catalog. In this example, it's an electronic store where you see cameras, uh, phones, laptops, available. Uh, so again, all of that can still, management still happens in OCC on the back end. And on the right, we're going to show you this, this app on desktop, on, we can see it on tablet and on, on iPhone. Um, so I'm going to pause on that for a second here. Let's go back to, uh, to our uh, browser here. And just to show it on, on desktop first, you know, we can just go to the uh, PWA store here and PWA shop and browse through this, uh, this site, much like any other uh, site on, uh, on desktop with a, with a, uh, a re fully responsive uh, um, desktop experience uh, here. First time it goes to the site, it caches and loads some of the information. Um, and so this is browsing it inside of the, uh, inside of the, the desktop, but also we installed the PWA not really installed it, but just sent the, the link to the desktop. And here we have it operating like, like it's a Windows app installed on the PC. So we can use this just like it's a native uh, PC application. It's, this is not the typical use case. What we're going to focus on more is, is the mobile application, how people would more typically use this in their mobile device. So let's switch over to the mobile device. I'm going to switch over to a webcam. And... Stop sharing my screen. Hopefully this is working now. So you don't want to see me, but you want to see the uh, screen. So I'm going to flip, flip over here to a uh, iPad where we're going to, let me pop this open here. Just make sure I have this uh, set up here appropriately. Okay, so here we have our, our uh, iPad. Uh, Jesse, or if I can't, if, if uh, this is not visible, please let me know. Hopefully it, it is. I'll, I'll try to yeah, center here a little bit on the screen. Looks great right where it's at. Okay, great. Thank you. So here we have the, uh, just the iPad interface. Um, and I'm going to open up, uh, you'll notice that there's not a, um, any icon on here for the PWA. We're going to open up uh, our, our uh, Safari browser. And here we have the, uh, again, the same interface, responsive. Um, running off of the um, the uh, same website. Um, again, we can browse the same devices here. Um, but also, another thing we mentioned about the, the send to. So if we click on that send to, scroll down here, we can simply add to home screen. Click on add to home screen. It asks for the name, where you want it, how you want to add it. So we added it, and now we'll see the uh, the PWA shop installed. It looks just like a, a native iOS app, and we can run it here. 
again, use that same experience, browse through everything on this on the site here. Again, look at the uh, the smartphones um, or or other devices on here. Yeah. So, and if we go into our our kind of task manager, if you will, on the the uh, Apple device, we see both the PWA shop running, looking like it's an app, and running inside the browser. So let's do something else here um, that we can uh, test out the capabilities here. So let's go into settings. So right now I'm connected to the Wi-Fi. I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, go into airplane mode, and that's the reason we're doing this as a uh, camera screen share, uh, so that um, we can be disconnected while we operate this. So now we're going to go back into our uh, into our browser. It tells me that if we want to connect, this is a general message for Safari. It has nothing to do with the PWA. But we're on the site here, so if we want to continue browsing, we can look at the, uh, the Apple phones, continue browsing on the site, looking at different categories, look at details on different, different devices. Again, we're offline here. I don't know if you can see that up here, but the, we have the little uh, airplane icon indicating that we're, we're completely offline. So we can get, continue browsing here. Uh, again, going through the different uh, devices. So let's uh, let's actually even continue on the the checkout flow. So let's say I want to add to cart. Uh, we get that in, added into our cart. Again, we're still offline, so we can see our cart. Let's uh, actually go to go to checkout, and then uh, enter my information here. It auto populated some of that. So we're going to the first step in checkout. Let's go to shipping. It auto populated as well. You can continue to payment and even start typing in payment information here. Uh, of course, you can't do the final checkout because that needs a live live uh, call back to the uh, credit card processor. But all that gets queued up um, and you can, and it will tell you that some, I'm not sure if you can read this down at the bottom here, but it says you're offline, some functionalities are limited, but we can continue through this flow and actually get all the way to the order. And when we get back online, it will actually process that order and to give us an up information update about that. Or we can, again, of course, go back and, and continue browsing, doing anything else like an offline experience. And just to, to show the, the same experience, you know, that, that same experience works on a smartphone. So again, we have that capability. If we want to add it to the, uh, to the desktop, we can add it as, a, as an icon into our desktop and browse, again, through the responsive experience here. Again, also operating in a uh, offline mode if we choose to do so, continuing to, to browse through the uh, the, the uh, devices uh, in an offline mode. Okay. All right, so I'm gonna switch back to the WebEx or the, the GoToMeeting. All right, can you guys see the, uh, the go-to meeting screen again? Yep. Yes, it is up. Great, great, thank you. All right, so we showed again the, 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 the mobile, tablet, and desktop versions of the PWA, both running inside of browsers and running uh, in the appearance of a native application, even though it was not native Windows code or native iOS code, we showed that, that happening. Again, some of the, uh, and we went through, in summary, during this uh, session, we went through the what is a PWA, we went through why do a PWA, who's using them, what results they're getting, and how do you do it. So that's uh, the main part there. So there's more information. If you want some more information, we have an ebook about this. So if you go to mcfadden.com slash oracle dash PWA, you can download a, a good uh, technical technical and business focused ebook about how to implement PWA again across OCC and ATG. Uh, we have some additional information available that from McFadden Digital. So we have uh, books on e-commerce, uh, our blog. Some of you may have seen our, our posters that we've been generating for about 15 years about OCC, ATG, marketplaces, um, as well as a marketplace maturity model, what we view as the next, next step in our in e-commerce evolution marketplaces. 
All right, so that's the uh, the content that we have. I think we'd like to now open it up to, to questions. Uh, also, I'd like to thank Tom Gatos, who is our Chief Marketing Officer from McFadden Digital. Actually, forgot to include him on our, our thank you list here, but uh, Tom Gatos helped uh, organize a lot of this. He's tgatos at mcfadden.com if you'd like to reach out to him as well. So I think, Jesse, we can open up for questions now. All right, if you have any questions, again, insert uh, those into the questions module. And there was a couple uh, entered here. Hey, this is Tom, by the way, this, the, the CMO we mentioned. How's it going, everybody? Um, so we did have a few questions entered in here, um, just reading through them. Um, one, Actually, one that was asked a couple times, it looks like we have some folks with ATG and some folks with OCC here. So actually, in various forms, it was asked, like, what is an implementation time frame for OCC? And what, what is an implementation time frame for ATG generally, for PWA front end? So we're working right now with one of our OCC customers on an implementation, uh, on a prototype implementation. We expect it'll be about two to three months for a, a full implementation. It's gonna depend on the, the user experience, of course. So uh, UX drives a lot of the implementation timeframe. So it's not like a full implementation. It can be, with the accelerator, we can certainly get a lot of the, the technical capabilities done. The uh, more important aspect tends to be in what type of user experience you want implemented. Uh, and depending on that, how much testing time there is. So a lot of the technology we've got ready in the uh, PWA Accelerator, most of the time, again, is spent on implementing your specific user experience, and then, of course, testing that before launching it, going live. All right, thanks. Uh, the next one was actually around the speed improvement, and it was basically you, you, you showed an example earlier of an, an OCC speed gain uh, when, when a PWA was implemented. Uh, what gains can be expected versus just using the OCC stock front end? So those uh, those numbers were mostly stock um, sites. So we can go back to that actual site there. So so there's numbers of um, of these uh, nine OCC uh, sites were again in the roughly four to ten or four to twelve second time frames versus PWAs, which are in the, the less than, less than let's say one to four second uh, average time frames for, for most, most sites. So a uh, pretty drastic change from you know, actual in these production sites. Nice. Uh, now there was another one related to that that I'll, I'll actually take because it's SEO related and it was how, how basically how is SEO affected by a PWA? And I think that, that this probably kind of triggered that question. Um, and it was kind of a general question asked, but I'll say that there's, when implementing a, a headless front end like this, there's there's no real need to change URL structures or whatnot. I mean, that's one thing you need to watch, but if you, if you do need to, just be sure to follow all 301 redirects, canonical naming, things like that, uh, all the best practices. Now, the interesting thing that Google's been doing is we, we all keep hearing mobile first, and we've seen with a lot of our customers that some people be penalized actually that haven't touched their front ends in a while, uh, especially with the last core update that, that went out there in, in uh, September. So if you've seen a drop, then Google really shifted a lot of their sites around to um, really view it from a mobile first perspective, even if you've had the mobile crawler for a while. Um, so a PWA that, that does make this drastic a difference that you see on screen right now, um, that cuts it from, you know, two, four, or, or four, six seconds down to one or two seconds, um, Google's going to reward you for that. And there's no guarantees with the black box that is Google search and whatnot. Um, but with, with a PWA just being so mobile friendly and, and being a mobile first approach in and of itself, uh, the crawler really should reward you for those speed gains. And it, it's certainly not going to hurt you unless you do something egregious while you're moving to it. Uh, so basically follow best practices and it, it just the speed gains will get you a lot of uh, a, a lot of good juice from, from Google in terms of organic SEO. Um, yeah, there was one more question. Uh, go ahead. If I can just add to that. So you know, Google has been the main proponent of PWA, Progressive Web Apps, pushing uh, this technology. Uh, and of course, they drive the um, you know, biggest search engine of, of the world. So you, you'll see that if, if you're a PWA, you know, here they, they rank you on best practices on the site as well as SEO. Um, and this, you know, our, our sandbox environment here gets a 99 out of 100 score on SEO. Um, so PWA definitely helps with Google. So you just Google to find that and Google <laughs> wants you to use that. So, so it, it definitely is a, is a step in the right direction. 
Yeah, that's great. And, and just and, and anecdotally, we haven't seen as much of a difference when you talk about Bing and Yahoo, but those search volumes are so low compared to Google anyway. And as like Tom said, as one of the primary drivers here, they are really rewarding people for that kind of mobile speed in, in whatever way it comes. It's just, you know, a, a PWA is a good way to get that. Uh, so the final question here, Tom, is probably going to best be answered by you. Um, and that was uh, basically, was there a specific framework that we would recommend or that you would recommend um, when implementing a PWA? You know, there's a couple of popular ones out there, you react uh, you can go other directions with it, but was there one particular one we favored or no, or what, we, what were your thoughts on that? So we use Vue. There's certainly a React, Angular, Bootstrap, other uh, different JavaScript frameworks, but we use Vue as one of the more modern um, uh, JavaScript frameworks, uh, and we've been very happy with that. I'd say React is probably a, a second choice, um, but our accelerator is built on, on Vue, the Vue JavaScript framework. Thanks, and that was, uh, that was all of the questions. So I guess back to, uh, back to Jesse to, uh, to close us out. We want to thank everyone for attending today's progressive web apps for Oracle Commerce Cloud and ATG webcast. Again, you can find a video playback of this under the web of this webinar under the community tab within 24 hours. If you have feedback or suggestions, or you'd like a copy of today's slides, please email us at info@commercepros.org. Again, thank you for attending. This does conclude today's webcast. Thank you.